I just gotta say this It is no secret, I'm feeling so great I'm riding that starship That took me straight to the highest place On top of the world Okay, welcome back to week 13 of Advanced Native Mobile Programming. This week's lesson is about um, smartphone sensor or device sensor, okay? So um, this lecture uh, consists of three parts. First, I'm going to explain about the basic concept of smartphone sensor. And in the second part, we are going to implement that uh, knowledge into the hands-on tutorial. And then finally, you will need to uh, work on uh, homework, yeah, fun homework, okay? Let's begin with the concept. First, um, every smartphone, yeah, each, each smartphone contains a lot of sensors, yeah. Uh, this sensor is used to um, measure different parameters of its surrounding, its environment. Uh, so your phones know its orientations, knows um, the temperatures and the light intensity and so on and so on. Yeah. So, uh, so that's why your phone's called smart. Yeah. Not just only handphone. Yeah. Because it's smart enough to know its surrounding. Okay. So, um, basic common sensor or um, mostly sensor that available on the phones um, can be divided into three category. Yeah, first is a motion sensor, second is the position sensor, and then the third one is the environment sensor. So motion sensor are useful for monitoring device movements such as tilt, shake, rotation, or swing. Okay. So for example, um, the implementation of this sensor is to use as a motion gesture controller for applied on game applications. Um, for example, you can steer the game car using a smartphone by tilting tilting it right or left just like you uh just just like you gesture it like you steering a wheel and maybe you can swing your phone back and forth like you swinging a bowling ball in the bowling game and of course you can like uh uh cast your uh, cast your fishing fishing bait and then uh in the in the fishing game and then you can catch the fish on the game and so on in the fitness application you may implement application step counter yeah which is can record how many users steps yeah and then um in the another example we can develop an anti-theft applications that may trigger alarm if your phones detect a subtle movement so for, for instance you activate the alarm and you put it in the rest condition in the table and then you can uh, you uh, leave the places and if someone picked the phone it's going to trigger the alarm with a maximum sound okay so that's that's a uh, several example uh how can we use motion sensor so um motion sensor have the uh have an hardware hardware sensor that can recognize that uh, measurement yeah that can do the measurement of the different different uh, input so uh, first the first hardware is called accelerometer sensor okay so it detect accelerations along the axis the x y and c axis that's include the gravity and secondly it uh, the gravity sensor uh, which is uh, the main purpose is to detect the gravity force along axis uh, gyroscopes to a uh, rate of device rotation around axis yeah and of course the step counter uh, which is uh, can measure how many steps taken by the users since the last reboot while the sensor was activated actually the step counter is not available in on in mostly phones yeah because it's it's used special hardware called pedometer and it you we usually see this hardware in in the wearable device like wristband or smartwatch smartwatch okay next um, next category of sensor is the position sensor the position sensor are useful for determining a device physical positions related with the words of reference yeah related to word coordinate system so for example you can use the geomagnetic field field sensors and combine it with accelerometer to determine a device position relative to the magnetic north pole so for example 
uh, you may develop an, um, a compass applications that can show you north, south, yeah, and so on. Maybe you can create a game that you need to go to some places like Pokemon Go and do something and it can direct you to the direction of the correct way and you can you uh, you need to implement those so accelerometer and the magnetic uh, sensor okay so um, the position sensor uh, have difference or maybe have similar hardware as the uh, motion sensor yeah so first accelerometer also can record the, the accelerations and along the axis and another sensor is geomagnetic sensor that can uh, detect the geomagnetic field strength along axis um, if you want to try you may uh, may use a magnetic yeah magnets yeah magnets um, around your phones and uh, your phones can respond up, uh, with that uh, force that trigger by the magnets so um, with the geomagnetic sensor and um, the last one is proximity which is can detect distance from the object and your phones and it measure with centimeter units okay i will talk about it later okay so what's the difference between accelerometer and gyroscopes okay so the the accelerometer is recorded record um the accelerations yeah how fast yeah how fast you, you move your phones in the axis in the three axis so if you swing fast enough the accelerometer will have a strength value in it okay and how about the gyroscope a gyroscope is record or measure uh the, the the rotation of your phones yeah it's defined in three uh category or uh, three kind of rotations the roll rotation which is uh, rotated along the y-axis the azimuth which is rotation along the z-axis and the pitch uh, rotation which uh, rotate based on the x-axis okay so uh, combine both um, both a sensor to measure uh, measure your phone position in the real world you can create a different lot interesting applications yeah okay and finally we have an environment sensor um there's uh, not all not all smartphone have this environment sensor yeah um this sensor is used to monitor ambient humidity, illuminance, ambient pressure, ambient temperature, and, and, and anything else that around or surround the Android device. So, for example, uh, it has the temperature sensors that can detect the temperature in Celsius, pressures to detect the air pressures around the device, and the light to detect the light intensity around the device device and in, in lumens yeah okay so we have three sensor uh, position motion and of course the environment okay in your phones <clears throat> now how can we work with the sensor i mean how can we access the sensor hardware and use that yeah use them use it to retrieve the measurement of uh, every parameter that we want to measure okay so uh, to handle the sensor uh, we you need to know three things first is the sensor manager is a class that um, have an access to the sensor hardware and it it have several methods that can help you to do uh, your programming with uh, sensors yeah for example it can have uh, access to listing sensor a lot of sensor and it can registering and unregistering sensor even listener and um, acquiring uh, information of your sensors okay and secondly there are there are sensor event is a, a data that uh, have different um, information such as the the timestamp of the event the accuracy of the sensor and the type of the sensor that have been uh, generated by the events okay and finally you need to know the interface the sensor event listener that you need to implement in your activity or fragment and this sensor event listener will will have to be registered and with sensor manager and therefore when the hardware uh, measures something or, or or give an update therefore the listener will will trigger and then you can do something with the, the value inside the uh is, is there okay so 
Uh, next one is um, typical use in applications. First, uh, you have to identify sensors and the capability means that you cannot always um, implement like a astrometer on the, all the phones. You need to uh, find the information whether these phones have the sensor or not. Yeah, Is the astrometer available or not? Or is the light sensor available or not? So you need to identify uh, the sensor that available in phones and then if it's not if uh, it's okay then you can do something yeah you can code in with that sensor and then secondly after you have granted the uh, the capability of the sensors you may record or measure yeah getting an getting an update of the measurement taken from the hardware sensor using the monitor sensor events okay so this is um, a snippet of codes in Kotlin about how to identify sensor and capability. So um, you, have, you first define the sensor manager. This is a global class. And then um, you instantiate the sensor manager by calling the cat system service contact contacts.sensor service. And then uh, to check whether the phones have specific sensors, you can have this code sensor managers get default sensors and then you uh, check what kind of sensor that you want to inspect yeah so instead for instance here this code is to check whether the phones have magnet magnetic field sensor and if not null means that the sensor managers um, uh, can have access to the hardware means that there is a magnetometer yeah there's the device the sensor is in your in the phones but else you may do something with it for example uh, shows information those are something else like sorry um uh, your this application is not available in your phones and so on and then after you have uh, access to the hardware and you uh, you next thing you need to do is monitoring yeah do the monitoring so um this snippet shows that I'm I'm uh, I creating the uh, sensor light sensor variable to monitor the light's intensity. So in this case, um, in the on resum yeah, on resum, uh, we register the listener. Okay, we register the listener. This light sensor manager sensor delay normal. So um, this first you need to check is is the M light is null or not yeah if the m light is not null, then we register the listener yeah and then uh, we set the uh, how fast the sensor will work so i'm going to explain that later but this is the way you monitor uh the changes yeah the cha uh, i mean not monitor the changes i mean this is the way you register the even listener of the activity to the sensor uh, light sensor okay so whenever uh, the light sensors updates its value it will trigger the on sensor change yeah this is the event listener that trigger whenever the sensor the light sensor update values okay so um, inside it you can have the the single parameter here this is a parameter or object that contains a lot of information yeah such as um, in this case if we have the light sensor you can access the lumens the lumens value of the uh, surrounding phones yeah um, the even values here may have different purpose you need to open the developer android documentations to know um, the, the specific information about specific sensors yeah about the values of the specific uh, index here so <clears throat> i'm going to show that lender okay as you can see here you see uh, this delay yeah what is that so the sensor delay normal is the default data delay that's suitable for monitoring typical screen orientation changes and use a delay of 200,000 microseconds um there is um a lot of different i mean there's four kind yeah four kind of uh constants or configurations how to set up the delay of your sensors if you don't if you don't want any delay you may use this sensor delay fastest means that 
the device, the sensor, always record without delay and always give an update. Okay, be, be careful with this. Yeah, using um, larger delay will impose a lower load on the processor and therefore uses less power. So if you um, put the delay faster here, it may drain your battery fast. Yeah, then you uh, ever know. Yeah, so. Um, um, my consideration is be careful with this um, sensor delay. Yeah. Um, therefore, yeah, for for different configurations, yeah, the sensor delay normals, two hundred thousand microseconds, and sensor delay game is suitable for playing games, to twenty thousand microseconds, and sensor delay UI, and finally without delay at all. Yeah, sensor delay fastest. Okay, so. Um, the best practice here, you should always disable sensor you don't need, yeah? especially when your activity is paused. You can uh, unregister listener yeah, using this override fun, fun on pause um, because it can, if you failing to do so, it's going to drain the battery in, in just a few hours because some sensors have substantial power requirements and can use battery power quickly. Okay, so it means that um, there are several sensors that requires a lot of cons battery consumption. Okay, so that's it. Now uh, we talk about the sensor coordinate system. Okay, so the sensor co the, your device coordinate system is same like uh, us. Yeah, is same like a word coordinate system, and it consists of three axes, and it always like this. Yeah, the Y is above, the Z is um, from the screen to of top yeah to i mean to front of the screens from back to the front of screens and x is from left and to the right so this is always like this the most important to understand here is the coordinate system of the device are not swapped when the device screen orientation 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 changes so if you dream or uh, if you or orient it or you uh, you uh, uh, rotate your device it always stay like that okay the same sort coordinate system never changes as the device moves. Okay, <clears throat> so um, if you work with sensors, you may emulate the sensor using emulator. Okay, the Android have um, the Android emulator have provide um, features on the emulator to to emulate standard sensors like um, rotation and movement. Okay, okay. All right, let's begin with uh, first tutorial. And uh, I need you to create a new project and name it as week 13. And then you need to design the layout like following screenshot. So open your new project here and open the activity main XML. And then you will have one hello world. Uh, you may set ID for it, txt msg. And then I need you to drag and drop another text view. Make sure you put it on left and right above the hello world here. So, yep. Okay. Set ID for it, txt, um, light, light, yeah, refactors. Okay. Another one, another text view here and put it below the hill word to the left to the right right like this and it should be the uh, gyro yeah text day gyro so i'm in this tutorial i'm not really creating a, a, a working applications i just want to test out the parameter the sensor parameter okay all right and before we continue, please open the Gradle, yeah, the Gradle app, which is located in here, Gradle app, and then inside it, you need to add these Kotlin Android extensions, yeah. For um, this week uh, tutorial, I'm not using data binding, and actually, I'm not uh, create MVVM uh, architecture yet because just like I said, I just want, I just uh, want to test out the sensor yeah sensor uh, manager to find out uh, 
how to read the parameters from the sensors. Okay, so first um, let's play with the accelerometer. And I need you to open the main activity. And first you have to create um, a sensor manager object. Yeah, sensor manager uh, object here. So you put it on this uh, private in the very top of main activity. Yeah, which is uh, which is we usually put several variables of the class here private for sensor manager and import the class sensor managers and it could be null okay could be null and then we want to grab the reading yeah the sensor reading the accelerometer meeting so we create another variable accelerometer reading and it's uh it's used the float array of three okay so accelerometer reading will consist of will contain the accelerometer value acceleration value of three axes that's why we create array of float uh with three index here one for x one for y and one for z okay and then in the on create we instantiate the sensor manager by using the get system surface and context dot sensor surface yeah sensor surface just like that as sensor manager with casting it into the sensor manager next um on the on resumes yeah why we why we always uh use the on resum to check for available sensor why because uh, you need to do it uh, do this every time the apps comes foreground yeah App, every time the application being active okay so and if you um comes back from another apps and go back to your applications you have to check recheck again for the availability of the sensor so first um let's say i want to check for this accelero meter sensor okay and how do we check that we use the sensor manager get a default sensor and then you uh, access the sensor that available here yeah for example i'm going to check for type accelerometer so the accelerometer sensor um will contain an access to the hardware to the sensor accelerometer hardware okay so therefore we can check whether it null or not yeah if accelerometer equals not equals null means that it availables yeah it availables that and then you can you can use that you can use it to your uh, into your codes okay so in in this case um if 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 it available what you need to do next is just registering registering a level if a listener yeah to the accelerometer sensor but otherwise if it's not available you just show those yeah just symbol those that the sensor is not available in your phones okay so let's uh put a those here no not this one in here let's put a sorry those dot make text um this accelerometer is not detected all right just like that um those dot length short dot show okay but if it's available then um we just register the sensor the sensor manager using the sensor manager and then we just call the register listener and the first parameter is the uh, object that will uh, have this listener that have this listener and we set it this means that the whole activity will implement the listener of a uh, sensor okay so we apply this here and then next um what kind of sensor that you want to attach into the listener so of course we're going to attach the accelerometer sensor next and 
how how fast the risk the sensor response for it so in case in this case i'm going to choose um sorry sensor manager dot sensor delay fastest or ui or whatever you like so let's uh choose um delay game here okay delay game here and then yeah that's it so um if you notice an error here to register is the nerve uh, it requires you to register this uh, event listener to an object that already implement that interface and in this case we we are refer to this which is this class this main activity and it's not yet implement the sensor event listener so the next step is obviously you need to add this interface into the class comma sensor even listener okay next uh, click on the error part here so the register here is no longer error but you have error in the main activity header class alt enter implement member choose all press ok so now you have a two new function being implemented because you um, extend it uh, from sensor even listener interface so these two new methods um uh is a product where you implement this interface uh what we actually need is just the sensor changes yeah which is trigger uh whenever the hardware the sensor hardware outputting something yeah outputting uh, a value and then this will be triggered the arc on accuracy changes change here will be triggered if uh, this kind of accuracy changes on the hardware so we um actually uh, will set it empty for now and we focusing our works in the on sensor change all right all right so um in this case in in this on sensor change first we going to check the sensor type sensor dot type equals sensor dot type accelerometer okay if the sensor type is accelerometer you have to put question mark here and you need to um okay let's change it to double exclamation mark you need to uh read the uh, re, uh you need to uh, access the reading yeah so this even have values that values contains different informations for the accelerometer for instance um the index zero is the acceleration strength of the x axis the index one this is the acceler acceleration strength of the y axis and so on for this and same thing for the c uh, the index two so in his case i'm going to um access the even value and put it in our accelerometer readings here so you just uh simply set it equals as accelerometer reading here because the even values here for the accelerometers is uh, an array of floating yeah consists of three values x y c or zero one and two next i'm going to show show it to you um the reading of individual value here phenol sorry even dot values of zero you need to copy paste it control c control v control v x y and c all right so this is one zero one and two okay next thing is i'm going to display it on screens in the txt hello world here txt msg here i'm going to show the xyc value so um msg dot text and we going to set it equals dollar dollar x comma y equals dollar e y comma z equals dollar z right so that's it okay next try it with our emulator first okay let's play the emulator okay so 
as you can see here, we have um, the first rating here. The X is zero, uh, this Y is 9.77, and this Z is 0 0.8. So um, maybe the reading will be different if you use the actual device. But if you want to emulate, emulate the, the accelerometer, you can use this triple dot here, click on the triple dot, and then click on the virtual sensors. Okay, so in this virtual sensor, you can try to emulate the um, the the head uh, the phone yeah so for instance here i'm going i can i can drag around here drag around left or right maybe you can adjust the z axis here z axis and maybe you can rotate it around like this okay so um if you notice that the the phones reading the accelerator meeting also also um, changes yes so updating as you can see here it keep updating if you um, move it uh, around like that okay so you can try to emulate the accelerometer or you can use your real phone okay so let's continue on the second tutorial okay the second tutorial here um, utilize, uh, by using the accelerometer, we can create a step counter. So what is step counter? Step counter is, um, is a kind of application that tracks the number of steps taken by users, yeah? Commonly used as central features of fitness app. And step counter usually use a special or specific hardware called pitometer, a sensor, which is uh, this hardware designed specifically to record the user steps, but unfortunately, this hardware is not commonly available on the smartphone. So usually, we can find that hardware in the wearable device like smartwatch or smart wristband. Okay, so without a pedometer, can we track the step counter or can we track the steps of the users? Of course, you can by using accelerometer meter sensor. So we can track the user step uh, by uh, uh, inspecting the changes of accelerometer of certain axis. Or, or I'm, I'm going to I'm going to show you after this. Okay. So we can track changes of the accelerometer, and then we can indicate or relate that with the user steps. So let's take a look at the concept here. So by uh, calculating the accelerometer magnitude, yeah, the accelerometer is a um, a strength of accelerations, and the result may be used to detect significant device motions, and that means that indications of steps that occurred. So the equation is like this: so you um uh, use the uh, square root of all addition of uh all axis, yeah, all um, strength axis, and then you you um, power it with two here, you times it to x, y, and z, plus it, and then you have square root, you will get the accelerometer magnitude. And these equations will result exact gravity value of 9.81 if the device is in the rest conditions, means that you put the device on the, on the flat surface, and um, you leave it like that, and, you, and then you get this 9.81 meter per second as the accelerometer magnitude reading. Okay, any changes if you uh, if you take the device up and then you swing it around, flipping around, it will change the accelerometer magnitude. Okay, right. And then um, by finding the differences between the current magnitude and compared with the previous value, and um, we can check if the differences is great enough, more than six, and then it means that the steps being occurred. So we can add the steps counter here. So therefore, it requires to record previous magnitude over time. Okay, so um, we record the magnitude we compare it with previous value if it's if the difference greater than six means that uh, you have to add or increment the steps by one and uh, by the way this is this algorithm is simply simple simplified version of the actual step counter and the actual step counter requires requires difference 
strategy to really accurately measure the user steps. All right. So first, um, let's uh, prepare some things for the step counter here. As you as you can see on the slide, we have to record the previous magnitude. So I prepare. Um, sorry. Private for previous V or magnitude, and then uh, it's a float, it can be null, okay, at first. And then we also prepare the step count, step count here of integer, and it start with zero, all right? Next, in the sensor changes here, on the center change here, and what you need to do is find the the magnitude, yeah, the accelerator magnitude by using the square root square root of a float here, and then you pull the each each of the axis, pull with two plus y, pull with another two plus c, pull with two. Okay, so we have this v. Which is uh, the magnitude or magnitude of accelerometer, and then we find differences between the previous um, fee. Okay, so we check first if the previous fee is not null. Okay, if it's not not null, then you can find the differences between current value minus previous fee. All right. If the differences is greater than than six, right? If greater than six, you it can co be considered as step being occurred. Yeah. So we yes, increment the steps, steps count. So we display the step counts in the text step dollar dollar step count steps all right so it shows to users so on the screens uh how many steps uh shows here and then next um if you look closely here um what happened if the previous fee is not null yeah so um don't forget you must uh, store previous value after this so you can call the previous fee equals fee Simple as that. So we record. We always record the previous v, right? With the and uh, with the latest uh, accelerator magnitude. Okay. Okay. Let's try it with the real device, guys. All right. Um, what you see here is my phones. So let's try the steps now. Uh, if you gently tap the back of your phones it will trigger the steps yeah gently gently uh give a small gently taps on the back of your phone you will see the steps so it's simulate how uh, we walk yeah it record the how many steps here okay and okay all right Let's move on to the fourth tutorial, I mean the third tutorial, the gyroscope sensor, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, the gyroscope sensor is is a, is a hardware sensor that uh, returns uh, the device orientations, okay? So, it's uh, useful if you want to know um, the, the degree, uh, the angle, the, the degree angle of the uh, smartphone rotations based on the, uh, different axis okay so to find the device orientations you first need to determine its rotations matrix why because the coordinate system between your phones and the world is different okay just like uh, as you see in the previous slides okay so a rotation matrix here helps mapping the points from the device coordinate system to the real world coordinate system so it's a transformation matrix which is can calculate back from the device coordinate system into the real world system okay and to do that uh, to 
uh, to get the rotation metric, you can use the sensor miniature to get rotation metric. And after uh, and after you get that, you can find the orientation as well. Okay, so the sensor miniature get orientation is used to return the orientation value of the device. So these sensor miniatures get orientations requires you to submit a rotation matrix. And then it will return three things. First, it will return azimuths, a degree of rotation of z-axis, roll the rotation of y-axis, and pitch the rotation of x-axis, okay? It's not degree, it's uh, actually a radians, yeah? Radians, not degree, okay? So let's um, let's find out. Uh, let's try it in our project here. So because uh, the, the rotation matrix here is uh, required you to have access to accelerometer and also the magnetic field reading, therefore you have to prefer, prepare uh, the metrics for it, okay, um, to be able to uh, continue with orientation, getting orientation. So we, um, at first we prepare two things, two variables here, the magnetic read readings and the accelerometer, accelerometer readings, and it's a floating array uh, of three because <clears throat> it contains the strengths of its individual axis, yeah, x, y, and z. Okay, let's back to the applications in here. And oh, you, you already have the Ethereum reading, so I just add one more for the magnetic uh, reading, okay? So it's same thing, float array, because um, every sensor uh, return value is always uh, in the form of floating array with three index in it. Okay, next, um, on the on resumes here, here, okay, let's uh, write another sensor, which is Q magnetic sensor, sensor manager, get default sensor, sensor dot uh, type magnetic, magnetic field, okay. Then um, next things uh, you have to detect it if your smartphone have it or not. So you just need to copy and paste from accelerometer, and then you change uh, it to the geomagnetic sensor. So and as you, as you can hear, there's the magnetometer, no magnetic magnetic sensor is not detected, okay? So um, we check for the availability of this geometric sensor, and then if, if, they have a, if it's available, then you just need to register the listener, okay? Therefore, the on sensor chains now can handle two events. The first event is the accelerometer, and the second event, of course, is the uh, magnetic, yeah? Uh, the <coughs> magnetic field. If event dot sensor dot type equals sensor dot type magnetic field. Next, um, we have to store the informations. Yeah, the magnetic reading equals event dot value. Okay, uh, we already store the information of accelerometer reading here. And then with both value, we can um, calculate the device orientations. So next thing is, if you, you check if the magnetic reading doesn't contain null, and also the accelerator readings must not contain null. Therefore, if both uh, variable have values, therefore we can, uh, uh, generate or device orientation. We can calculate the device orientations. First, we have to find out the rotation matrix. So we prepare the rotation matrix matrix here because sorry, rotation matrix. Uh, it's three by three, and you can store it in in kind of array, floating array, three by three. And the orientation angles, 
okay is also float array of three yeah it is one is provided for the angles of its uh uh axis yes for its axis so next uh, to get the orientation matrix you need the sensor manager get rotation matrix and then you first you put the empty rotation matrix here so you provide it with the uh, uh, empty rotation matrix and the next parameter is, is is inclinations yeah since we don't don't require it the inclination matrix so we set it as null next uh, the gravity of floating array so this one we put the accelerator matter reading yeah the accelerometer reading is um contains the information of accelerations uh based on the gravity it means that it also can record the gravity the force of gravity and then finally uh, we have put the magnetic reading magnetic reading here okay <clears throat> the value of accelerometer reading here the value of magnetic reading here and based on that informations after uh, uh execute these codes the rotation matrix will contains the values that we requires requires to convert the coordinate system the local coordinate system of device into the world coordinate center coordinate systems okay so next we call the sensor sensor manager get orientations get orientations and then we at the first uh, parameter we put the rotation matrix and the second parameter we put the orientation angles so once again the orientation angles is the result yeah the orientation angles here which is null at beginning is the result of the calculations to get the orientations of your smartphones yeah so um the local local coordinate smartphone will be multiplied will be calculated with rotation matrix and it produce the uh the radians on its axis yeah on it not axis i'm sorry uh on its category as a mute pitch and roll here in the you can access this in the orientation angles yeah so like, for example if you want to know the azimuth the azimuth yeah um you can you can access it in the uh index of zero yeah orientation x uh x index zero once again um this is in radian unit therefore you need to convert it into a degree okay so let's write it first here how do we convert it to degree yeah um you can utilize the math two degrees all right the math two degrees functions that uh, require the orientations of radian here into double here and then after you do that okay let's see okay you have to plus it with uh, 360 double and percentage it with 360 therefore you can have the degree between 0 to 360 yeah of the real world coordinate system so i think i can copy paste it all into the pits and to the roll and uh, change this index one and two here so in you know you got the azimuth pits and roll and it's time to display it on the text gyro text text, text gyro yeah and Azimuth equals dollar azimuth comma pitch pitch comma rule uh sorry rule equals rule All right yeah okay and let's hit the play button and take a look how it looks like so i'm going to call uh play it here and i'm still um i'm still in in using using this 
my phones here. Let's take a look the results. All right, so you see the reading here. So the azimuth and pitch and rule. So let me rotate my device a little bit. Roll it. See the roll, the roll value increasing. Let's roll it again to the left. As you can see, the roll increasing. So let's uh, pitch it up and down. Yes, yeah, you can see here the pitch is uh, increasing and decreasing. Uh, if you want, just like in the slide, you can divide everything uh, times it with 100 and divide everything to make it um, to I mean to um, to to ignore uh, the comma, yeah, the the number behind comma, yeah, several number behind the comma. Okay, you can do that by divide it with 100 so you can do something like this time 100 okay and divide it by 100 let's put it like this then i'm going to copy paste it control c control v control v and should be pitch and this one should be roll all right okay that's it uh, let's move on to the next tutorial okay we continue with uh, tutorial six yeah uh, use light sensor okay light sensor is, is a hardware sensor that measures how much intensity of lights hit the device sensors okay it returns a single value of lumens a measure of the total quantity of visible light emitted by a source per unit of time. Application example here is, for example, yeah, if uh, you can create an application that trigger dark mode if light intensity low, okay. And another one is auto adjusting brightness when watching video based on light intensity. Okay and uh, how to set up the light sensor it's sim similar like a previous example uh, you you create a sensor uh, object yeah so in this case on the on sum full uh, light sensor equals sensor manager okay sensor type uh, light yeah type light uh, and same thing here you copy paste yeah you copy paste the uh, codes that checking is the light available or not and then you copy paste here and yeah the light sensor is not detected okay similar like a previous example next how to use it is very easy um, the sensors will return a single value of lumens, yeah, of how bright is the light that hits the sensor, okay. Uh, let's go to the on changes, yeah, on change here. So we have a difference uh, if here for individual sensor. So you, we add uh, the the checking event here sensor type equals sensor dot type light okay and then we can try to read the sensor measurement it simply um, shows the number of lumens in the text light here so even dot sense uh, values zero okay convert it to string yeah string okay so let's try it uh, i'm going to play it my phones okay this is the results if you see here we have 52 reading yeah quite bright here if i cover my phone with my hands it will reduce yeah to a low number yeah indicate that the light is not uh, bright enough, okay? 
yeah that's how you work with the lights and you may use a different uh, strategy to uh, handle with the lights yeah to create a creative applications okay let's move on to the last tutorial the proximity sensor the proximity sensor is um, a sensor that detect uh, the object in the front of a uh, uh, face yeah in the interface of the of of smartphone and some device may accurately show the distance number between object and the phone screens in centimeter yeah but other device simply shows the values near or far okay so usually if we if a uh, flagship uh, smartphones uh, bundled with the uh, expensive sensors it may detect the proximity yeah accurately okay so uh, the example of using proximity sensor is uh, disable the screen when you hold the phone close to your face while you are on a call okay yeah uh, we don't want to uh, miss uh, touching the screen while we call, while we handle the phone and place it in the uh, in our face surface okay so same thing here you uh, enable the sensors the proximity sensor proximity sensor call sensor manager get default sensor sensor dot type proximity okay so we just copy paste again okay yeah like that and how to read the data yeah uh, it's always return single value yeah this one single value uh, which is centimeter indicate that uh, the, the distance between the front face of smartphone with the object okay so you can check it in in the on sensor changes here you add a one more checking if sensor type sensor dot type proximity okay and i want to check whether the sensor is near enough okay let's use the text like here dot text uh even dot values zero to string okay all right so uh because my phones only return two values which is uh, near or too far yeah in my phone here it will return zero if the object is too near and it will return five centimeter if the object is too far yeah Regard, regardless uh uh more more than five centimeter it always return five centimeters okay so based on that facts i'm going to check the values yeah must equals less than zero here means that the object is too near to my screens and i would like to change the uh the apps ui to dark mode yeah set default that mode okay okay i'm setting up his this one to make uh, my app to use the dark mode dark teams yeah okay <clears throat> so if uh, the objects too near with my phones it will change the screen to dark mode okay right uh but by the way um you have to check uh, the return value of your proximity sensor and check whether uh you have the same configuration like mine or not okay so i'm going to play it here okay okay let's cover up the screens so uh you can cover the screen with your hands put your hands on the uh 
on the surface usually look the proximity sensor located at the the uh, right or left yeah at the near near the camera front face camera so you can cover it and see the result okay so i just did that and if if you saw it uh my applications using the dark team immediately yeah activate the dark team dark mode okay so it's it at the background turn to turn black and the text here turn to white if you want to configure configure uh the uh the the colors yeah you may do say may, you may do that in the teams here values teams and there's two two teams available the the normal teams and you can change the color primary color secondary and so on and the dark themes here okay the dark themes here all right so yeah okay now um i need you to do the homework okay so give me your best idea about an app that uses several different sensor sensors yeah you may you may uh create an application that uses accelerometer gyroscope light sensor and so on it could be an entertainment app it could be the game productivity health tracker app and so on okay describe your ideas in two paragraphs that contains what kind of sensors that you use in the app yeah what the purpose of the sensor in your apps yeah okay you have to describe that okay answers will be posted in the uls okay uh, thank you for your attention. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, email me or chat me with Hangout. Bye bye for now. No.